So let me just start with how you reacted uh, to this piece of legislation. It's been out for a couple of days now. When you first took a look at it, what did you think? Well, you know, I think this is a poorly drafted piece of legislation, and it's being rushed through Congress. Uh, the Affordable Care Act was debated for nine months before it came to a vote, and this thing is being pushed through without anyone having a chance to really consider what it means. I wonder if you were consulted, if you know of, of colleagues in the insurance industry were consulted, uh, how many people were at the table when this thing was drafted? Well, as far as I know, the insurance industry was not invited to participate in this. So we've had no input. And that's, that's kind of extraordinary hearing that from you. I, I would have thought, again, looking back at how the Affordable Care Act was drafted, there was criticism that the insurance industry might have been too involved. Here you're saying uh, nobody, nobody consulted you or your colleagues. No, we weren't, we weren't consulted as far as I know. Do you think that this legislation stands a, a chance of, of working? You've, you've read it now. You've seen the changes that are proposed. Uh, could it work? What would it mean for, for the insurance uh, industry as it's set up right now? Well, 15 to 20 million Americans are going to lose their coverage. Those who got coverage under the ACA through Medicaid expansion, those who got it through Marketplace. Doctors don't like this bill. Hospitals don't like this bill. Seniors don't like this bill. Republicans, some Republican governors don't like this bill and Democratic governors don't like this bill. So I'm not quite sure who benefits from this legislation. Bearing that in mind, and it, it does sound like there is a substantial opposition against it, were it to get through, uh, how would that change your business? What would that mean for Molina Healthcare? Well, I think the first thing it's going to do is it's going to just destabilize the individual insurance market. Um, by removing the individual mandate, insurers are going to be concerned that uh, people will wait until they're sick to buy insurance. And that's going to mean they're going to raise premiums. And I think that the premium increases you're going to see for 2018, if this bill passes, are going to be as large or larger than what we saw last year. And last year, it averaged 25%. I want to talk about your company in specific. After the Affordable Care Act came out, it seems like your company was able to navigate uh, these new waters pretty well. Of course, we've seen uh, some difficulty here over the last couple of quarters. What changed? How has how is, uh, how is, uh, the Affordable Care Act complicated your business here recently? Well, the biggest issue that we have had recently has been with the risk transfer. We are a company that insures low-income Americans, and we now cover a million people through the marketplace. Many of those people are working poor, and they are generally fairly healthy, but the risk transfer formula penalizes uh, companies that have low premiums and are efficient. We have among the lowest administrative costs in the, in the industry, and those things work against us. Part of what's being proposed here are credits or subsidies in the amount of $2,000, $4,000 to help buy coverage. Just give us a sense of what kind of coverage somebody could buy for that amount of money. Well, I'll give you a concrete example. If you look at our silver product in California, the cost is about $4,300 per year. And our average age is 41 years. So a 40-year-old man would get a $3,000 tax credit. That means he's going to have to come out of pocket for the other $1,300. So right now, he's paying about $20 a month under Obamacare. That's going to go to $110 a month under this new proposal. In addition, there are these subsidies called CSRs that will go away. That's going to increase costs by about 10%. So in addition to those premiums, he's going to have to come up with another $400 a year. And I think that if you're earning $22,000 or $23,000 a year, you're going to look at this and say, I can't afford to spend $1,700 to buy insurance. So I think people will lose coverage. Dr. Molina, we've heard the president talk about having the ability to buy insurance across state lines. We heard it from the Secretary of Health and Human Services uh, yesterday, Tom Price talking about it uh, as well. What are the particular, particular difficulties of doing that? How hard would it be uh, to have a marketplace in which a consumer could cross state lines to buy insurance? You know, I think this is a myth. Uh, for years, people have talked about this. The barrier to providing insurance in multiple states is not licensure. I mean, most companies now are providing coverage in many states. We operate in 13 states. The issue is, in order to offer insurance, you've got to have contracts with doctors and hospitals. And the barrier is not the licensure issue, is getting those contracts and developing the provider network. I don't think that the ability to uh, offer insurance in one state and sell it in others is going to make any difference. And in fact, I think it's going to do a lot of damage to consumers because you know, if you're living in Illinois and the insurance commissioner that's regulating you is in Florida and you've got a problem, you're going to have to deal with people in Florida rather than people in your own state. So I don't think it's an improvement. 
Just last question here is uh, about how difficult it is to make an argument based on math, which it sounds like uh, you're doing here. You mentioned that this is a piece of legislation that is uh, coming before the Congress very quickly. Your argument centers on math. Um, are you optimistic that that's going to, to win out, that people are going to hear what you have to say? How do you plan to make that argument? Well, we're doing our best to get out and educate everyone who will listen. But I think the important thing is for Main Street to get involved. People need to know that many of them are going to lose coverage, and even those that have coverage are going to see big rate increases in their premiums. I think the town hall meetings have been effective. I think you need to speak to your congressman. I think you need to speak to your governor. Because Medicaid is going to be shifted from a federal program to the states. And the two things that states have to provide are Medicaid and education. And people are going to start arguing about, do we fund Medicaid or do we fund education? This is going to have a huge ripple effect through the entire economy. Hospitals are going to lay people off. People are going to lose their jobs. People are going to lose insurance coverage. This is not a minor issue. This is pervasive.